The activities history's early men engaged in are ones you don't expect anybody to be able to think up. Some had a religious basis, others were just for fun, but all over the world, different civilizations came up with games and sports that weren't just ridiculous, but also life-threatening. Today on Crunch, we'll be talking about 12 ridiculous ancient sports that sound made up, but aren't. Seminal Alligator Wrestling Centuries before it became a widely acclaimed sport, alligator wrestling existed. Drawings from centuries ago show Seminoles jumping on these reptiles to kill them. Mikosuke and Seminole ancestors hunted alligators for food as far back as the 1500s, long before the first European explorers wandered into Florida. At the beginning of the 20th century, alligator wrestling, which was an important survival skill, became a roadside attraction that helped Native Americans generate revenue. Now, it has finally evolved into a sport. Seminole wrestlers who would go at these dangerous animals with their bare hands describe the core of the sport as reading the body language of the alligators, anticipating their moves and following the rhythm of their movements. As poetic as that sounds, having one's head caught between a jaw that can exert up to 3,000 pounds of force is the height of danger. Roman Chariot Racing Ancient Rome is known for deriving excitement from violent entertainment, the kind that keeps you at the edge of your seat. Chariot racing was an extreme sport that was even more popular than gladiator fights. It was usually held in the massive Circus Maximus Arena, which had a curved sand track of about 2,000 feet long, surrounded by stands that had a capacity of up to 200,000 people. The game was played by 12 riders, usually divided into four teams, each with a unique color, and the crowd showed their support by waving colored flags and cheering loudly. Each team went seven laps, and the first person to cross the finish line won. The chariot race was dangerous because there were no rules. The players were allowed to whip their rivals, toss them from their chariots, tip their chariots, or trample fallen riders with their horses. Chariots jostled against each other as they went through steep curves, and horses crashed into each other. The degree of injury sustained from this reckless sport was unimaginable. In fact, the players were lucky to walk away with their lives. Jousting Jousting originated in France in the 11th century. It was a pastime for medieval knights and noblemen, and from the 13th century, it became the most popular spectacle across Europe. Competing knights usually rode on horseback holding lances that were at least 12 feet long. And though one purpose of the game was for knights to show off skills and impress maidens, jousting could be a dangerous sport causing injury and even death. Sometimes the end of the lances had sharp edges which could penetrate metal armor and fatally wound an opponent. The sharpness of the lances wasn't the only threat. The game involved two horses approaching each other with a top speed of almost 100 kilometers per hour. An opponent could suffer broken bones or dislocated joints from the impact of a lance from a rider on a fast racing horse. Many people, royals and commoners alike, suffered fatality due to this game. Several royal families recorded losses as some kings and princes suffered fatally from participating in this game. Subsequently, members of the royal family were banned from jousting. For example, Henri II of France died in 1559, when a splinter of a lance pierced his helmet. King Henry VIII of England suffered lifelong complications from an injury sustained from a jousting match. And due to how dangerous it was, the fame of the game was reduced over a few centuries. Minoan Bull Leaping Minoans who lived on the Greek island Crete are not only known for worshipping a strange goddess associated with snakes, but also for their favorite sport, bull leaping. In bull leaping, each player was expected to approach a charging bull, grab its horns, and use its motion to gain momentum, haul himself over, and land on the ground behind the bull. The Minoans were full-fledged bull enthusiasts. The animal was a symbol of their religion and culture and statues of it were situated at the entrance of places like temples and the Palace of Knossos. Some Minoan art that depicted a man somersaulting over charging bulls led scholars to believe Minoans participated in the dangerous sport of bull leaping. The sport typically took place in the large courtyard in the center of the 150,000 square foot Palace of Knossos, which is believed to be the root of modern bull leaping practiced in France and Spain.
Ancient Egyptian Fisherman Jousting Fisherman jousting was played by fishermen in ancient Egypt, as far back as the Pyramid Era in about 2700 BC. This extreme sport was played on the Nile River but was an irregularly staged event. Fisherman jousting happened for peculiar purposes. Sometimes it happened when groups of fishermen were fighting over a territory. Other times it was played to settle disputes between villagers. However, whatever the purpose was, it was a deadly game. So, how was it played? Two rival teams of fishermen would approach each other and each team tried to knock over the members of the other team until they fell into the Nile River. They could use their hands, feet, or poles to cause their opponent's boats to capsize. The losing team was left to die as a result of drowning or by crocodiles and hippopotamuses, which swarmed the Nile. The Ancient Spartan Cryptea Cryptea was an ancient Spartan military academy that was a compulsory training point for Spartan military men in their early 20s. In this training, the young men were sent into the wilderness around Sparta to kill the Helot, who were members of Sparta's slave population. The point of the Cryptea was to keep the Helot population in check as slaves rapidly outgrew the Spartan population. These young men were sent into the wild with a dagger and barely anything else to survive, with the sole purpose of eliminating any Helot they encountered. The Cryptea program was one year long and the young men were rewarded according to how many Helots they eliminated. Bridge of Fists Venice, Italy is a city surrounded by water and has so many bridges. There was an annual tradition called Battle of Fists, which took place on neighborhood bridges without rails. The tradition started in the early 1600s and typically lasted from September to Christmas. Ponte de Apugni, which translates to Bridge of Fists, was a bridge where this brawl mostly took place. The point of this game was for opposing clans to throw punches at their opponents to knock them out and throw them into the canal below. Many spectators would surround the bridge, watching from their canoes or the windows of their homes just by the canal. The bridges had white marble footprints marking the fighter's starting point, and when the game began, everyone would rush in and start throwing punches. The game became quite popular and several aristocrats were both spectators and sponsors. Over time, the game became more dangerous. Punches escalated to general fights and before long, sharp fighting instruments were introduced like roof tiles and knives, resulting in nasty fights and loss of lives. Fortunately, on September 29, 1705, the Venetian government annulled this tradition. Mesoamerican Volleyball the Mesoamerican ball game, first seen in the 15th century BC, was invented by the Olmec people. This was a special ball game played by teams of at most four people. The game's technique is somewhat similar to volleyball and it's played with a small round rubber ball in a narrow playing area spanning about 14 meters by 2 meters, bordered by two sloping walls. Unlike volleyball, however, the goal was to keep the ball, which weighed about 5 kilograms, in the air without using their hands or feet, just their hips. Each court had a circular ring made of stone and any player that managed to hit the ball through the ring emerged as the winner. For many years, this game was played for fun and associated with prestige. It was even adopted by other cultures, for example the Mayans, who adopted the game with their twist. The Mayans used the game for settling disputes caused by land or inheritances. It was also used to foretell the future and in the Mayan version of the ball game, losing resulted in death. Captives of war were forced to play rigged games that resulted in their sacrifice when they lost. Native American Pasakua Kohowak Pasakua Kohowag is a Native American game played between the 15th and 17th centuries, which literally translates to, they gather to play ball with the foot. As the name implies, the game was similar to soccer. However, it was dangerous and played almost like a war. According to American writer Roger Williams, Pasakua Kohowag was played by 500 to 1,000 players on a large field of about a mile, with goalposts at opposite ends, each about half a mile wide. Unlike soccer, there were no rules, just a large number of unrestrained men running around on a large field. The game could go on for days and most players quit due to broken bones and other serious injuries. Afghan Goat Polo 
loosely translated in English as goat pulling. Buzkashi is Afghanistan's national sport, which has been adopted across Central Asia for many decades. At first glance, Buzkashi seems like polo. However, a goat is dragged around the field instead of a ball. Although it started out with each rider trying to grab the carcass for himself and carry it into a specially defined end zone, over the years the game has been modified. Now, Buzkashi involves two teams on horseback trying to pull the deceased goat to one area in a field. It wasn't just the fact that the players chased the dead animal that made the game brutal, but also how tens of unrestrained horse riders would wander into unspecified directions on fast-moving horses, bumping into each other and causing injuries. As the terms of the game have improved these days, real goats aren't used anymore, and the game is played in two teams, so it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. Roman Harpastum Harpastum was a ball game played in the ancient Roman Empire. Archaeologists suggest the sport started around the 5th century BC and believed it was popular for almost 800 years. The ball was soft and small, about the size and texture of a softball, although unlike softball, it was stuffed with feathers. The game was played by two teams of 12 on a large field divided into two sides. Each team was expected to try to keep the ball on their side of the field for as long as possible. Harpastum was a test of speed and agility. It required a great deal of force and opponents were allowed to attack each other during the match. As expected, high levels of violence were recorded and players often left the playing area with serious injuries like broken bones. Native American Tewa Arathon The Iroquois people who were Native Americans came up with a lacrosse match called Tewa Arathon. Tewa Arathon, which literally translates to Little Brother of War, was played to keep warriors in shape and help them hone their skills between wars. The Iroquois also played Tewa Arathon to settle disputes between tribes and as a spiritual exercise to amuse the Creator, who, according to the Iroquois legend, was Deganawida who united the six nations of the Iroquois. Tewa Arathon was played on a field that was at least 400 yards long with up to 1,000 players, who each used sticks with nets on the end to catch a deerskin ball. This physically exerting game resulted in all kinds of injuries, from fractures to concussions. Thanks for watching Crunch History, and as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more interesting facts about the past.